mess a bit here. So, uh, hello everyone. My name is uh, Kelly Harlton. I'm uh, here with uh, Caramat Wilderness Ways, two of my great friends, uh, my guru Morris Kohansky and uh, Randy Bujma behind the camera there. Uh, we're going to do a little segment on uh, high lines. And be, we often get asked, um, you know, when people see how we, our parachutes up in the air and and uh, different configurations where we're able to pull things uh, out of the reach of bears and things like that, people are always interested in how we, without being an acrobat and climbing trees, how we get this stuff up in the air. So we're going to show you guys uh, a couple of techniques for getting things uh, up and out of the up and off the ground. My voice okay, Rand? Perfect. Okay, this is kind of an interesting scenario because we get to show you uh, two different aspects. We've got a tree here that is virtually devoid of branches, and then we've got a tree on the other side that is um, that is full of branches. So we're going to be able to show you two different, uh, well, more, probably more than two different ways to get things up high. So I'm using this, uh, I call it plastic crap because it's inexpensive rope and most people hate it because it tends to not hold knots very well and it's <laughs> the rope from hell the rope from hell yeah but it does have some interesting properties one is that well you can melt it and fix your plastic canoe with it <laughs> as a canoe repair kit but uh it's very very static so the issue we have when we're putting up a high line is uh trying to find things that don't have much stretch so with this one we put it up and put tension on it doesn't budge it's pretty impressive another thing we use i have laying in the snow is um a, p a piece of pull tape or some people call it mule tape it's also very static and it's a, a really good choice to use for this but today we're going to go with the uh, with the plastic stuff so the first thing i'm going to do is um because this tree doesn't have any significant branches it's got a couple little uh little what we call nails i'm going to actually get those out of the way because this technique i'm going to use i need a relatively smooth trunk so i'm just going to use a long pole and simply snap those twigs out of the way you'll find they'll be troublesome later on. So that's about it. There's nothing really sticking out that's created, gonna create too much of an issue. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tie a, a special knot. And it, what it actually is, it's actually a Faulkner's knot. So what I wanna do is I wanna create a loop on this tree that I can work up as high as I want and then collapse it onto the trunk. But I want to make sure that I can undo it when it's time to go home without having to climb the tree. So I'm going to make sure that I leave enough tail hanging down from my rope that I can reach it from the ground to undo it. That should be ample. So the way a Faulkner's knot works, it's just a simple, it's actually a one-handed knot. <laughs> I'm gonna straddle a rope, put my two fingers, put a loop, and then I'm just gonna pull a bite back through a half twist. Now to improve that knot, I'm gonna tie it again, but I'm actually gonna put an additional twist in because what happens is it goes from basically an overhand slip knot to a figure eight. So the thing is, it's slightly more secure yeah, yeah. and it's less prone to collapse when I put pressure on my rope here. That's actually turned out Last time I looked in a book, that type of knot where you can untie it by pulling a long tail. Yes. They call it the uh, highwayman's knot. Oh, hi. Okay, there you go. Okay. So I want this nice and tight. So it's not too prone to collapse. Tighten it a little bit more. That should be good. So we're gonna take a short stick first. I've got a long stick and a short stick. I'm gonna take a short stick and we're going to put a little split in the end. Make sure there's no nails or nothing in that puppy. I'm going to break a little piece of the stick off for a wedge.
So uh, if the ecology is right, this could actually be a stick with a Y on it, but often we're stuck with uh, straight pieces of sticks. So all I want is I want something that I can hook this rope and start to work it up the tree. Once I've got a little, little ways up, I'm going to go to a longer stick. It's just a little unwieldy to use something this long for the first few feet. <laughs> I'm going to give this thing a haircut. Do the same thing. Remember the selfie selfie notch? <laughs> yeah. You could use that, I suppose. Uh, oh yeah. To engage, the grab rope? your cord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, uh, it's nice to have it so that it actually slides on the rope and doesn't grip the rope because then you can. So this is a this is where a, a, a Y stick is a, a little bit of an advantage. And then again, we'll put a split in this puppy. So, uh, assuming that when you stand that up there, you leave that, you don't retrieve the fall. You you can, yeah, unless you have two trees and you need it for the other side. <laughs> <laughs> This may look dangerous, but the reason it's not is because um, I'm using a baton and all the energy is instantly expended and I'm not hitting it enough where I'm going to have any kind of a follow through, but it is important. You wouldn't want to be wailing away. <coughs> Should be what the doctor ordered. Put another little wedge in this puppy. Too heroic. It's a similar problem to cutting birch bark by driving a knife tip into a stick. You have to have a, a two or three sticks because as a <laughs> closer to the ground, you got to use short stick and then gradually yeah. eventually. In the winter time, you you could make your uh, dip your rope <laughs> in uh, water till it freezes. Oh yeah, <laughs> and, it make it? and shape it into a circular. Hi. Now you, you know, there's branches on the far oh. side that'll stop you from going in. Just lost my split there. With the bushy trees, we often, of course, uh, uh, tie a, uh, use a cord and tie it to a stick like your, the size of your baton. And a throw or two, you'll end up being able to. It's a challenge that we, we have when we're trying to put a rope on a tree to pull it down safely uh, with a chainsaw, the higher you get the rope up. So you sort of get into a situation of how do you get that rope that high <laughs> to attach it to a tree for accurate falling. That's, we're gonna use a similar, exactly that weighted, but instead of throwing it, we're just gonna use a pole and we're gonna just hook it over a branch. I'm using a piece of rope here because uh, this piece of spruce has a nasty twisted grain and doesn't want to cooperate too much splitting. So that's okay. So you used a constrictor knot there, did you? The constrictor, yeah. That chip would be about right. In, in my career, 
there is a certain class of people that suspend all their, their uh, groceries and everything to be on the reach of bears. Yeah. My idea was that if a bear wants it badly enough, he's going to find a way. Because I've seen bears climb a tree, get higher than the rope, and then fall on the rope to dislodge the. And so I'd say, okay, if that's a problem with bears, maybe we shouldn't be there. <laughs> yeah. Well, again, I, I, I think you're just creating a puzzle that by, you know, make it a little harder. If they really want it bad, they're going to get it. But at least they just can't get a freebie. But you'll spend an hour trying to suspend your groceries every day. Better to carry, uh, especially canoeing and so on, you carry uh, plastic barrels. <laughs> yeah. 45, you get 45 barrels of time in your canoe. <laughs> the bears can't get into the barrel. Yeah, that's handy to pull that tree down very accurately. Yeah. If I had two trees like this, I would do the same thing on the other side, but I would I would only do this and I have a beaner on it and I would have this threaded through the beaner. So that when I get it up, I tie the end off and then I just pull this and this is on the beaner right next to the tree, eh? So. There's a, it reminds me of the technicalities of engineering that the university programs, we ran the month of May. Right. And we set up the first slalom of the year. So as part of our training, and then it was advertised all over the province, and all the canoeing mm -hmm. fraternity would show up uh, to the, where we set up a slalom course on the river. And actually, people, you know, would put up the thing and pull the tree down and almost kill a bunch of students. So if it's a dead tree, really be careful about how <laughs> fragile they are when you that leverage. You know, the pulling to the hanging of the. Right, the bars and the right, salt. right. And that, uh, that was a touch and go situation. People so, set it up that high and the <laughs> well, you, well, you got all that leverage, huh? Yeah? Yeah. So Morris talks about a technique that where we use a pole like this too, by the way, and we have the rope tied to the end of the pole on the opposite side of the tree. So the line's yeah. coming this way. Then we can just lift the, lift the rope up as high as we please. And then walk around. And then walk around and hook it or whatever we need to tangle it, and then we can crank it tight that way too. So your limitation there is... But the pole the stays pole. with it there. Yeah. And of course the pole, like that's, that could be that slender, so you can get quite a reach if, you, if you're lucky. Yeah, oh, the yeah. trouble is you don't often, that, that's a very uh, unusual and precious thing to have this such thing. long <laughs> poles that are available in the bush. I'm gonna check my rope for knots. I think it's all good. Yep, it's all good. Oh, I see I got a, looks like the start of a jam knot in here. It should work well. So in this case, I'm gonna actually use a, a counterweight. Tie a rope on. Yeah, well, sometimes you use a thinner rope in the Navy. We used to, two ships, would transfer someone because you've got six ships and there's only one doctor and where there's a sick person the ships sort of parallel each other and then they shoot a special uh, rod across the bow and the cord pulls it across and the heavier rope pretty soon the whole harness comes over <laughs> so sometimes you've got to be able to get higher with your stick if you're using small cord because you can get it up higher right and then it pulls then you know as you pulls you know, yeah pretty soon you'll have whatever well, that's why they string cables across ravines and things like that, eh? Start with a line. I, I'm part of a, a zip line in BC, and it was a huge expense to get the zip lines back and forth across the ravine. So what we did is we flew a remote control plane with a fish line across, a heavy, like a hundred pound fish line. Yeah. And then we pulled paracord, and then the paracord went to a, to a three-eighths cable, and then the three-eighths cable pulled across a uh, uh, like a full, the full size of zipline cable. And we did it all for like 5,000 5, bucks. And we did that seven times back and forth across the ravine. And every time the remote control plane, it would have to crash, right? When it got to the other side, because it was in the bush. So we'd recover the plane, fix it. But it saved us, oh my goodness, it saved us money. It was, because to get one line across is just astronomical eh, to do it. Usually it's with a helicopter. They'll sling it across the helicopter. That's the Cadillac way. So it's kind of an interesting uh, way to go. 
We'll see if this split supports my, uh, oh. let me just throw another one on there. Instead of throwing it, you're going to raise it up there and push it over a branch. Exactly, right? yeah. Oh, I'm a, I'm a terrible cowboy, and most people are. I would say that next to uh, the jam knot, I would say probably one of the most utilitarian knots is the constrictor. Yeah. I would say the short on the heels of the jam knot, the constrictor is the second knot you have. Then the bowling. So I, just so everyone knows what I'm doing here, I want to pick a branch that's not pointing this way, pointing it straight out from the tree, or better yet, a little bit angled backwards is, is best. So I can see one that looks like it's, it's going to suit the bill. Just poke it through. Hook it on the other side of the branch if I can get it through. Maybe if you had to tie it closer to one end yeah. instead of the middle. Yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine trying to throw that in there? So now I can just simply pull my pole out like this. And now I can use this pole to knock my weight down. An antifreeze jug works good. Okay, so next step is we want to decide what we're using the high line for. So if it's for the parachute, of course, and this is my opening, I probably want to put something about middle, uh, you know, estimate what's going to be the middle of the clearing. So by the time this is here and pulls up, it would uh, end up fairly close, but I can adjust it. Uh, I know this, I can't adjust it. That's right, I'm fixed here. So I have to pay attention to where I want my uh, uh, cheater line, I call it. So uh, a good knot for this application is our Alpine butterfly. So I'm going to put that, uh, uh, let's pretend that this is going to be a bear cache. So we could use this to pull up a parachute, but in this case it's going to be bear cache. So I'm going to tie a, a Alpine butterfly here. And then I'm going to tie another one here. So I have two. Line man's rider. What's that the name, name for it? Hmm? Line man's what? Rider. Line man's rider. Putting a loop in the middle of the rope. So it's a very pretty knot. Uh, the alpine butterfly, it's good for a couple of things. Number one is uh, a non-slip loop. It can take pretty good strain from both sides. And um, uh, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter how much strain I put on this, it's a very easy knot to get untied, so you can use it for shortening a rope. And if you've got uh, damage in your uh, rope and you want to isolate it, so it's not part of your, so it's not going to risk breaking, I can actually isolate that uh, piece of bad rope without having to cut my rope. I still have the length of it by using an alpine butterfly. So the good. biggest problem that you've got to apply traction if you're trying to pull something out of the ditch and you've got a busload of people just to hold the rope like tug of war, you don't, but if you make a loop like that, I used to have a really long rope and I'd make the loop big enough you could uh, use it around your waist. And the students would pull my canoe full of gear. They had unbelievable traction that they could use if you've got a loop like that to pull on, rather than just trying to grab the rope and trying to pull on it. So if you need someone to move something, this you gotta make. Loops like that. Cool. Well, we do it on the canoe, I suppose. We're hauling firewood and 
Same thing, eh? So here I'm just using a, uh, whoo, that may not fit over that. So rope. I'm putting through a, what I call a, a cheater line, or a, uh, it's probably a, an official name for it, but the issue is if we're going to put up a, a, a bear cache, we need to be able to get it down to get our toothbrush and then put it right back up up again if we want to if we want to be uh, really fussy. So it's got to be convenient. So we're going to put the ridge line up nice and high and tight, and then these are the lines we actually use for getting our stuff up and out of the cache. Up. Important safety tip is always tie these in. Dropping together. the line every time you need to use it, you just hoist it up on its exactly, end. Exactly, exactly, and then. Uh, and then uh, we always make sure to tie the ends together. It's a common mistake. Everybody forgets, mm -hmm. and then you hoist it up, and you watch your end flip through, and then it's ah. Oh. <laughs> you got. Plus, you need this to pull it back down because if you get snagged up in the trees on either side, you need to. Be, it's kind of hard to pull a rope all the way through one way or the other. So, so it's a important thing to to uh, keep track of. Well, I would put up uh, clotheslines, and I would put up. Uh, ridge lines for tube tent, but I never put up a high line. Never got around in my whole career to oh. get that far. This uh, has a piece of hardware from a parachute on it, so it actually turns this beaner into an actual pulley. I don't think it's going to work very good with this little line, but it's kind of fun. This thing is. <coughs> Gee, I'll add another chapter to my book on working with rope and string. <laughs> Make sure nothing's tangled, everything looks good. So now this we want as tight as we can with all our might because we don't want, when we put weight on it, we don't want it to uh, start to tangle. Fix it now. Now tying off is an easy matter because of the friction of the tree trunk. We don't even have to know a knot. We don't want. Of course, I could have tied it. You could have tied it. You got lots of ropes. Could have tied it to another tree over there somewhere. Or another tree, yeah. And then I could put a. You could actually put a par buckle in in there if you wanted to. Uh, put yeah to crank it, yeah. So now our uh, bear cache or whatever we're dealing with. Oh, and in a pinch, if you if you don't have carabiners, you, this can be done without carabiners, but it's just, a, it is a lot of extra friction, and uh, you can cut the rope if you uh, lift your stuff up and down too many times. So now the idea is we hoist our food and, and what have you, and then now I can have as many of these as I want, and they can all be tied individually to a, off to a tree. So that each person has access to their own to their own kit, right? So I can have ten of these along. And the, with the alpine butterfly idea, if you don't use alpine butterflies and you just throw, throw lines over and things, well, and or beaners, then everything comes to the center and sags, and it's a big tangled mess. So that's the idea of keeping the. Uh... I have a separate. So what we can do now, if this was a parachute, the only thing really missing is something called the perimeter line. So. Uh, so now, the, our, now that line's nice and tight, our parachute's lying here in a container, or it doesn't have to be parachute, it can just be a big tarp, center point of a big tarp, or a guide tarp or whatever. And uh, I can simply just uh, hoist it up now to the center, tie it off, and then if there's not trees that line up or things to tie to, or you, wanna, or you don't feel like going to stakes because you want a, a clear ceiling, you can take a long, thin line, and you just what we run what we call a perimeter line, and you go all the way around a, a group. Just tree, it can be, it can go over a long span. You don't care, and now you can tie your line. Everything lines up. You can go any direction to tie your tarp or um, parachute out. So that's sort of our our rough system in the bush, anyway. When we put up a chute.